Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the podcast, wherever you guys are tuning in from, whether that be YouTube or one of the many podcast platforms that you guys can find us on. We're going to be going through tough conversations, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I have actually done a podcast of this uh, over a year ago, if not two years. I didn't check the date before I checked. I uh, jumped on this podcast, but I wanted to do it. And I, I, a lot of the time when I do podcasts and I do this content, honestly, I'm speaking to myself or I'm sharing my real life, real time experiences. And lately I've been having really open, honest conversations with very, very close people to me, my partner, my friends, my family, my clients. And uh, there's just some things that I've really picked up that have, has really changed the way that I communicate. And just some tips that I think would really add some value to people when it comes to the topic of having tough conversations. And you might not even want to use that word. It might be just an open conversation or a courageous conversation or just being transparent, being direct, being firm, whatever you want to call it. So this one is going to show you how to have conversations where you don't allow the emotions to swing too high or too low, where it just turns into an argument, where there's no actual outcome achieved and there's no actually productiveness from the chat. You set an intention, you set the expectations from the start, you have an outcome going into the conversation, plus some other tips that I'm going to really uh, hopefully get across to you guys. So pen and paper at the ready if you'd like to not, to note these points down. So for tough conversations, first point that I would write down, understand the positives and the negatives to both options. And what do I mean by that? As you guys, if you listen to me enough, you guys understand that I preach this about pretty much everything. There's always positives and negatives to everything. There's positives to having a conversation, a tough conversation, and there's positives to not having it. However, there's also negatives as well. For every positive, there's a negative. For every negative, there's a positive. For every upside, there's a downside. For every downside, there's an upside. We live in a world of duality, so there's no such thing as just one-sided uh, answers or one-sided opinions. So something, and I, I had a chat with this with um, with a very close family member of mine. And I won't let this person's uh, name be known, but I had this conversation with someone and this person was with a partner and she did not want to have a tough conversation about breaking up with this person. So I asked the question, I said, what are the downsides and what are the negatives of not having this? She's like, what do you mean? I said, why aren't you having it right now? Well, I don't want to have the, I don't want to hurt him. I don't want to start an argument. I don't like conflict. I don't like confrontation. I don't like the painful chats. I don't like those. I don't like the painful side of it. It was essentially the answer for it. So I said, great. So, so I can balance this out and you can learn the other side of this. What's the negatives of not having this chat? She's like, what do you mean? I said, what are the downsides? What are the negatives of not having this tough conversation? And I held her accountable and I made her list them out. And it's like, for example, a downside of not having a tough conversation is you don't, uh, you don't set boundaries for yourself and you allow yourself to be walked over. You, your self-worth goes down because by definition of the last point I just made, because you're not staying true to who you are and staying firm to what your boundaries and your, your standards are and expectations are for yourself. You don't hold the other person accountable. So you don't give that person the opportunity to, the opportunity to learn and grow. It's like as a business owner, myself, if I was to have a, a member of mine or a client of mine want to cancel their membership with us, which happens, it happens every single week. We have cancellations every single week. I like to hear the real answer. And some people might say, oh, I haven't got the time. I'm just not motivated anymore. I'm just et cetera, et cetera. But I like to get real, like, look, thank you so much. And I appreciate you being a part of it. But I just want to, uh, if I could hear some feedback from you, what's the real reason why you're canceling? Or what is it that's changed since you started that's now made you want to cancel? Because you were a great client of ours and we loved having you here, but now something's changed. So so I can improve and be a better, better business owner. What feedback do you have for me? And honestly, I don't take it personally. Say it as direct and honest as you can because I want to learn and I want to grow. Now, that's my attitude of having tough conversations or receiving feedback. I've noticed a lot of people don't have that. Now, the point I'm getting to is a negative of not having that tough conversation or having that open conversation is you're not giving that person the opportunity to learn. Because at the end of the day, people are doing the best with what they've got. Because if you're blaming your partner for not being a great communicator, to not being open, to not being transparent, well, maybe that's the way that he or she was raised. That Maybe that's the way his parents or her parents did it. So that's why they're uh, modeling the same way of doing things. So it's easy to blame someone else. It's easy to 
just shift the responsibility to someone else. But at the end of the day, if you're not having the level of communication that you want in your life, that's your responsibility to do something about it. Because there's nothing stopping you from going up front and having those open chats, but you might be missing the skills and the confidence and the tools to do it. So this is maybe why you're here today. So I got off track a lot then, but let's go back to the point. Number one, point number one, understand the benefits and the negatives of having the chat and also not having the chat. Okay, by not having the chat, the problem doesn't get resolved and the problem continues and problems transform. It's like a snowball. A snowball doesn't start massive, it starts small and over time, over momentum, over consistency, it becomes a massive problem. So a small problem, if you don't be open enough and transparent enough about your boundaries and it and it doesn't get, for a better word, abide to or doesn't get respected, then it just gets worse and worse and worse. Most people have heard the example of a frog in boiling water. If you were to put a frog into a pot of boiling water, it's going to jump straight out. But if you put a frog into normal temperature water, it's going to enjoy itself. It's going to stay there. And if you slowly but surely turn that temperature up, eventually it's going to cook itself to death. It's going to boil itself to death. That's the example of allowing low standards by not having tough conversations, by not being direct, by not being upfront, that's what it leads to. Because say right now you're in a relationship and you're not happy with it. You're not happy with the level of communication. You're happy with the level of um, intimacy. You're not happy with the level of connection. You're not happy with the level of uh, personal time and personal space or you're just not happy with whatever area. The honest answer is you've allowed that. You've created that. You're the person that hasn't been upfront. You haven't had those tough conversations. And a negative of that is the result of those boundaries that aren't being abided to or respected by. Again, I got off track then, but by not having this chat, by not having this tough conversation, there are always downsides. There's always consequences. Like I said, the problem won't get resolved. It's going to get continue and it's actually going to get worse. It's going to affect other areas of your life because if your relationship or your friendship or your uh, business professional relationships aren't transparent, aren't open, aren't fair, then that's going to be compensated in other areas of your life. You might beat yourself up for it. So your self-worth goes down. There's so many examples, guys, but so you can actually see both sides so you're not like biased to, oh, I don't want to have it because I don't want to hurt this person's feelings. Let's use an example before I move on to point number two. And there's five points, by the way. So five points if you want to write those down. So to move on from point number one, there's always positives and negatives. Think of the negatives of not having the conversation. Let's use relationships because this is probably the most common place this pops up. So say you're in a relationship and say that you've got in your heart, your heart tells you that this person is not the right person for you and you feel that you understand that, but you're scared of having that conversation and saying and being upfront about it and sharing your concerns and sharing how you feel because you don't want to hurt that person. You don't want to be lonely forever. You've invested so much time into this relationship and you don't want to quote throw it away and start from zero you've got all those concerns i would ask you what's the negative of not having that chat well i always like to ask this when i have this conversation with people is is it true that you're not the right fit for each other and the answer is generally yes so i said great so is it true that out there somewhere there is a right person for your partner that you're with right now, that isn't the right person for you. Is the right person for them out there somewhere? Yes, they are. So by you not having that courageous conversation and having that open conversation to actually either break things off or actually fix it to get to the point that you need for this to be a sustainable relationship, you're actually taking away from that person, your partner's opportunity to go find that person that is truly meant for them. Because then I asked, does your partner deserve to be happy long-term? Great. Well, by you not being courageous and having this conversation, you're actually preventing them from that, from being happy and living a fulfilled life and having a meaningful relationship because of the pain or the potential pain or the perceived pain of that conversation is holding you back from doing it. So the question then becomes, is it worth the short-term pain or for the long-term reward? Or would you rather avoid that short-term pain and be hurt forever? And that's the way I really position that that conversation. It just, again, brings to their awareness or to your awareness the downsides of not having this chat because every decision 
has pros and cons and consequences. So just remember that. Number two, always go into a, a, a tough conversation. So point number one, understand the benefits and the negatives. Point number two, have an outcome. Make sure you're going in there with an outcome that you're looking to achieve. And it might not be measurable. It might not have numbers on it. It might not have dates on it. But make sure you've got an outcome, whether it's just to, I don't know, let things off your chest. So you just want to vent. That's all you want to do. You just want to vent. Just, just make sure you've got an outcome, which will tie into the next point. Point number two is quite short. Have an outcome, okay? Point number three, pre-frame. This is one of the most simple but most powerful tools that has completely shifted the way I communicate with myself, with my friends, with my family, with my, my partner, with my employees, with my team, with my accountants, with everything. Pre-frame. What does that mean? Get all your expectations and concerns, voice them at the start before you get into it. What does that look like? Let's use an example. Say I was to have a tough conversation with you right now, whoever's listening or watching this right now. And I was to come to you and say I had a concern about the way that you've been speaking to me or treating me and it's making me really doubt myself and it's affecting my confidence and it doesn't really sit well with me. That's the situation. So I'd come to you. I'm going to call you John. So John or uh, Sophie. So Sophie, can I have a really open, honest conversation with you? Is that okay? Most people will say yes or they might say, Yes, but not right now. I'm busy. I've got work on. No worries. When can we sit down and have a really open, transparent conversation? And they might say tomorrow night. Fantastic. Let's book it in 6.30. Beautiful. Let's go. So you've booked it in. You're now at that conversation. This is how you pre-frame. Look, Sophie. Look, John. I want to be really, really upfront with you right now. I want to have a chat to you about a couple areas. It's going to be around the way we've been communicating, the way that we treat each other, the way that I'm feeling. And I just want to be honest with you because... The things I'm going to say might hurt to hear, but I just really want you to listen and I really want you to not respond or react back. I want you to really sit there and listen to what I have to say because in the past when we've had these chats, you've reacted and you've you've cut me off and you haven't really got the point across. What I'm saying will not be 100% true. Nothing is either right or wrong. It's just my perspective and I really want to share my perspective with you so you can see what I see and feel what I'm feel feeling so you can understand where I'm coming from. So what I would love to do, I'd love to share you exactly what's going on. I would love for you to just sit there and consciously listen, not react and jump in until I'm completely done and then we can discuss it afterwards. Is that okay, John or Sophie? Can you see how upfront, how neutral I was, how I shared exactly the situation and what's about to come? Essentially, think of it of, think of every problem or challenge or potential challenge that you think might pop up and then squash it or take care of it before it actually pops up. So then you set the intention, you set the pace, you set the frame and people know what's coming. I hope that made sense. So step number three is pre-frame. Number four, huge one, non-negotiable guys. And I do this not just with tough conversations, just honestly with like my day-to-day living is regulate your emotions, guys. Now, how do you do that? And what do I mean? It's not letting your emotions swing too high or too low. It's not allowing yourself to get so frustrated and so pissed off and so angry and so fearful and so guilty and so anxious or whatever emotion is, either highly high positive charge or low negative charged emotions, whatever it is for you. Just allowing yourself to stay neutral because whenever I have these types of chats, I normally share like there's no positive out of negative. I've I mentioned that in point one, but when you are highly emotional, either highly positive or highly negative, you don't see the other side. So if you're really, it's like when you've had a conversation or an argument with someone and you're really angry, all you see is all the things that make you angry. You don't see any of the opposing sides. You're not living in duality. You're living one-sided because your emotions are swinging to a certain side. If you watch some of my old videos about the pendulum and how to control your emotions, it's in the Change Your Life playlist on YouTube if you want to go watch that. Um, and you'll see the pendulum diagram that I show. But it's not. it's just allowing yourself to stay neutral and centered Because when you're centered, you can see both positive and both negative. You're not emotionally biased to how you're feeling and you're actually able to hear what that person's saying, see where they're coming from. Obviously, you'll feel where you're coming from so you can see your perspective at the same time. And it just allows the conversation to not get too heated, not get too emotional and not turn into an argument. So step number four is to regulate your emotions. Learn to breathe. So 
I talk about diaphragmatic breathing. So breathing into your diaphragm, not into the top part of your chest, all the way deep into your belly, big belly breaths. So breathe in. This is how I do it. I do four. I've been taught to do six seconds, but I've found four seconds is more sustainable for most people. But if you want to go extreme, six seconds in. So you breathe in like this. Then you hold it for six seconds. Let it sit there in that belly. And then you breathe out for six seconds. And you do that and you don't have to be over the top and <sighs> you don't have to be super loud when you do it, but consciously do it. You're, the person you're talking to might not even be conscious of it. But however, you might want to add that into your pre-frame because say you're going to go and have a chat with someone who you know has an experience of getting really angry, really frustrated, really emotional, and they just turn conversations into arguments, then that might be something that you'd want to pre-frame. Look, John or Sophie, in the past, we've had chats like this and they get really emotional. So what I would love to ask is I'd love to ask for you to consciously breathe because what I'm saying, I'm not saying it to hurt you. I'm saying it to because I do love you and I do care about you. But if, you're, if you get really highly emotional in this chat, you're not going to see both sides and it's not going to go anywhere. And it's going to turn into an argument. So what I'm going to be doing, John and Sophie, I'm going to be breathing. I'm going to be big belly breaths to control my emotions the best that I can. I would really like to invite you and encourage you to do the same so we don't turn this conversation into an argument. Is that okay? Again, that might be a frame that I might use depending who I'm talking to, depending on the situation, depending on what's going on. And then lucky last guys. So let's, re let's recap those before we get to the last point. Number one, understand the benefits and the negatives. What are the benefits of doing it? What are the negatives of not doing it? And vice versa. Always set an outcome. What's the outcome that you want from this conversation? And it might just honestly be to, to vent and share your emotions and get something off your chest. That's totally fine. Uh, number three, pre-frame. Think of all the consequences, all the potential problems, all the issues, all the concerns you've got before you go into that chat and let them know it up front and let them know what you propose to handle that so you can have a productive and a progressive conversation, okay? Um, number four was to regulate your emotions. So deep breaths in, okay? Six, six, and six, okay? Six seconds in, six seconds hold, six seconds out, okay? So really control that breathing. <sighs> Good way to neutral yourself, neutralize yourself. Number five, last point, guys, debrief. Learn and remember to debrief things because I'm super guilty, guys, of having a chat and it seemed like it went really well and it seemed like we got the point across, but because we didn't debrief it, we weren't actually both entirely clear on what was the message, what was the takeaway, what was the what was the action item that we were going to do to improve from it? What was the lesson that was learned and how are we going to uh, apply that lesson to our life? So, for example, say you've had the chat. You've, you've, you've already in your head, you've already weighed out the pros and cons of not having the chat and having the chat and you've made this decision that you want to have this chat. You've gone in with an outcome, so you're clear on the outcome that you want to achieve. You then pre-frame them with all the concerns that you have or the, all the potential problems that you think would pop up or that think would stop or hinder the ability to have this conversation. You're regulating your emotions all throughout that before, during and after and you also debrief. So great, Sophie. Great, John. Thank you for having this chat. I really do appreciate it. It was, it, this chat had the potential to get quite emotional, but because you regulated so well and because we spoke really well together and we understood where each other was coming from and we shared our frustration with each other, but we were able to work through it together. I feel like this was an incredible conversation. So thank you. Just so we can move forward from this, Sophie and John, what is it that we're going to improve? What are we going to implement or what were the lessons that we've gotten from this or that you've gotten from this so we can hold each other accountable? And then I write them down. I normally aim to get about three, one to, th one to three. It might just be one. It might just be a lesson. And then again, how do you apply that lesson to your life? But I like to do one to three and then I like to put a date on it. Great. So a lesson that we got is we're going to book in uh, a date night every fucking week or we're going to book in uh, intimate time for us or we're going to consciously read books and personal self-development or listen to incredible podcasts like the one you're listening to right now and we're going to schedule time in so we do that so we prioritize our own growth that will be done by Wednesday the 22nd of fucking November or whatever I just made that date up so set a date and set an action item and ladies and gentlemen that is all she wrote for this this podcast I hope it did help it's um it is uh it can be a tricky, a tricky thing navigating these these chats because again, emotions get involved and 
people can get heated and people can trigger you. But again, these chats, they're, um, they're powerful because it's what, it's what really takes care of those, those problems that are really on your, in your mind or that be, you've been thinking about for a while or it's been affecting you for a while. So the ability to have these chats in a very neutral way, in a very beneficial, practical way, it's one of the greatest skills that has, has honestly really improved the quality of my life. Um, so I hope it helps out yours. So besides that, ladies and gentlemen, that is all for me. Enjoy, enjoy the outro and I'll see you guys on the very next podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today in this presentation, guys. I hope you got some value from it. If you could like, comment, share it with a friend, I would really appreciate it. Uh, secondly, I do have a lot of courses and programs available online if you're looking for further work with me or whether you'd like to work personally with me as well um, as a coach. And also, there is a link below where you're watching this or consuming this content there is a link there to support the channel, to allow me to do this more, help out more, give back more. If you are in the position to give back and support, I would really, really appreciate it. It would allow me to just do this more and more and more and bring more content to you. Have an awesome day. I'll see you on the next presentation.